so I've certainly known of Alain Robert for, for many years, all his climbing, of course. And then uh, I met him at an event in Europe, and then I also have read his book. And so, you know, I think because I'm, I'm a younger climber, I, I think of him more for climbing skyscrapers around the world. But then I've also read about all of his exploits on rock when he was younger. And, uh, and many of which were done uh, in some of my local areas, like Joshua Tree. You know, and so some of the things that he climbed on rock are are really more impressive than what he's done on buildings, but it's just been 30 years or so, and so nobody really remembers them now. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, Alain Robert has been a super talented climber for, you know, 40 years or something. Well, I think Alain Robert was, was one of the, the first people to really free solo very difficult routes. I mean, uh, you know, he, he free soloed A-Day Plus uh, in, in France in the 80s, you know, back when that was an extremely hard grade. I mean, in fact, he's free soloed harder grades than I ever have. You know, I mean, and, and that was a long time ago when those were really close to the cutting edge. So, you know, I mean, I think he was just one of the first people to really push the difficulties of free soloing to a, to a very high level. And then it, it's just that he's more well known for then doing that on buildings, just because free soloing buildings is such a such a performance, you know, such a spectacle. I, I think it's easy for that to overshadow all, all of what he's done on rock. But, but I mean, really, I think that what he's done on rock is much closer to the cutting edge. I mean, it's the same with some of the other legendary free solos of the past, like Peter Croft, let's say. I mean, some of the things that they've done are slightly forgotten just because there's not very much uh, documentation. The most relevant part of the, the grades that Alain was soloing in the 80s is just how close to the limit of human potential they were at the time. So, I mean, he, he was climbing 13 plus, basically hard 513. And that was in a time when 514 were, were the hardest grades in the world. And so basically he was only a few grades away from, from the hardest that anybody could do with a rope. And so the idea that he was climbing some of the hardest things in the world without a rope seems totally outrageous. You know, I think that, that now in more modern times, I've soloed similar grades, a little bit easier, but, but similar, except now they represent you know, like say six or eight grades below what the cutting edge is. So it's much more within, you know, the modern comfort zone. Whereas I think when Alain was doing it, it was just really close to the edge. When I read Alain's book, he mentions a few climbs that he did in Joshua Tree and in, in the West and the U.S. climbs that, that I know and some of which that I've climbed with the rope over the years. And a few of the sections when I read, I, I almost had to read again. I, you know, I was like, I didn't know that he'd ever free sold them. I didn't know that anyone had ever free sold them because it wasn't really reported in, in U.S. climbing media. 